Hey all here OS Reviews, a few days ago I was browsing on Amazon and an MP3 player caught my eye. It really reminds me of a smartphone because of its tall aspect ratio and it's almost like a full screen experience which I thought was kind of cool. If you're still looking for a dedicated player just for listening to some tunes, maybe if you're going to the gym, you want to carry something lighter and less expensive than your phone, this might be an interesting option to take a closer look at. Now this particular model has a built in speaker as well, it even has built in blue Bluetooth 5.0. It'll support wireless TWS earbuds, and it's also a touchscreen measuring 3.5 inches diagonally. In case you do want to watch some quick video clips on it, it does support many video formats. Uh, it also has some kind of interesting built-in games, at least in the ads, they display a few of the titles. It does have a built-in FM radio, it has a built-in voice recorder as well. This is the 8GB variant that has a micro SD card slot that can be expanded up to 128 gigs. It also supports pretty much every music format under the sun, whether it's MP3, WMA, even FLAC, and other lossless high-res audio formats. And we also have a processor, which is 400 megahertz, definitely a lot slower than on our smartphones, but that's supposedly already five times faster than other players in the past. Finally, the aspect ratio of the screen is 20 by 9, so it's even taller than the 2 by 1 that we're kind of seeing as a standard on smartphones these days. Despite the tall aspect ratio, it's still a relatively small and compact player. Other accessories include an instruction manual. We do get a free pair of earbuds, which looks to be of actually pretty decent quality. It is made out of metal, but for the best effect, you can definitely use your own more expensive earphones or headphones. Unfortunately though, the charge and sync cable is still using the older micro USB, definitely would like to see USB Type-C going forwards. So coming back to the design of the player, we have just the company's logo on the bottom. This brand, Mahdi, does make a lot of MP3, MP4 players, and they've been around for a number of years now, so they do have a bit of experience in producing audio players. The back houses the built-in loudspeaker, and it is made out of a glass material, so it is very glossy and reflective, but it doesn't seem to have the pattern that the ad showed, which was kind of a gradient finish. The rim of the player is constructed out of aluminum, so it feels very very sturdy and premium in the hands. The side features a lock key for disabling the touchscreen when you tuck the player into your pockets. There's also a dedicated volume rocker that's textured and easy to click on and access. The bottom features the 3.5mm headphone jack if you want to use wired headphones, micro USB for charge and sync, and a dedicated power on off switch. On the other side we have access to the micro SD card slot. The player is booting up right now and it's going to take about 10 to 15 seconds and then it will pop onto life. By default we do have a pre-applied screen protector just to prevent any scratches. Some other players that we've reviewed recently include the Fio M5. There's no built-in video support, there's also no games and some of the other extras that we have on the Madi, which is also cheaper. And here it is next to a more conventional MP3 player, this is one by Bass Play, the P3000. Finally here it is next to a X-Duo X3400, a pretty popular low-cost hi-fi player, which again has much more of a traditional look going on. So although it does have many features and a widescreen experience, it still is pretty small by contrast to other larger players and even smartphones, as we can see next to it, it looks like a baby. Now there is still a little bit of a bezel surrounding it, unlike the ads showed on Amazon, but that's kind of to be expected and really still makes it look quite modern. There's a little bit of a chin towards the bottom, but again, as a MP3 player, um, it's not really too big of a problem. Overall, it still is quite comfortable to hold. All of the features are listed as icons on this one page. So starting with music, we can see that the songs are categorized under uh, memory, so it's the music that you've loaded into the 8 gigabytes versus whatever you have on an SD card. It takes a split second to open up, but afterwards it still is relatively responsive. Now it's definitely not as smooth as say an Android based device, so there is no real kinetic scrolling as you can see there. The animation as we're going down a list is a little bit more abrupt. It's definitely still usable, but uh, it is one thing to keep in mind. The touchscreen is fairly responsive and it is an IPS display, so colors as as well as the viewing angles are also quite good. When playing back a track, this is what the UI looks like. If you have a cover art, it will be displayed as a box over here. Looks pretty attractive, and I can tap on the heart if I want to add this to my favorites folder or create a separate playlist from the player. I can also do things like change the EQ directly from here, and you can see a selection here, including classical, soft, jazz, rock, subwoofer. Uh, however, it doesn't seem like you're able to create custom EQs on the player, unfortunately, so you can't tweak things up and down like on some of the other hi-fi players 
players we've checked out. Now, one thing I really like is that the music gently fades in and fades out whenever you tap on play, so it's not a really abrupt or sharp start. Also, if I scrub ahead to another part of the video, it also slowly fades in, so it gives you a very kind of seamless and natural transition. The built-in speaker quality is also better than expected. The surprising thing is it's not really tinny and doesn't distort either, even at higher volume levels, even if it is lacking a little bit in terms of bass. So it's comparable to a good quality smartphone speaker, I'd say. Otherwise, one thing to keep in mind is that this player does not have gestures, unlike, say, an Android device. You can't really swipe up to leave something. You have to tap on the back key, position on the very top left-hand corner that's pretty easy to reach using your thumbs. Whenever you have a track playing, it's also going to be at the bottom, and you can tap on play to resume it, and it works quite well. You can leave the music function, and the sound will still be playing back. However, it seems to be lacking some type of uh, widget or gesture for you to control the music really quickly. Uh, from here, if you want to play and pause it, you have to kind of go back into this folder. Ideally, from a UI perspective, I would have liked to see this widget uh, be extended onto the home screen if there's still music playing back. So if we tap on the aforementioned calculator, you can see that it's going to take a second to pop up. It is a scientific one, pretty basic, but works all right. So if you need to do some quick computations, again, it is functional. If we look at the games, which I was really curious about going in, we'd indeed have the same selections that were shown on the Amazon page, which is good. Most of these, though, are puzzle-based games, which are not really graphically intensive, as expected, but they're still quite fun to play around with. We have classic Tetris. Um, it also tells you the instructions, and you can select a level. Um, basically relies on these little analog controls at the bottom of the screen for moving these pieces around. I can rotate it, I can push it down, and I can also pause the game. So it does work pretty well. It's a fun little extra. The next game here called Hua Run Road, where the goal is to move the centerpiece, uh, it's Hao Cao, into the very bottom area by shuffling all the other pieces around. Uh, on the board. And there are instructions that you can tap on to read through the story. What's really cute here is all the characters' names are taken from um, a Chinese Three Kingdoms period. Now we also have a fun Sudoku, so this is just a basic Sudoku game. Again, takes a second to load, and we do have a few different options to tap on. Again, instructions are at the bottom, and you can have multiple levels pop up as well. You can tap on different squares, put in a number. Unplugging the headphones, you do hear a little bit of sound in the background. You can turn this off if you want to. Um, this is, by the way, what the volume controls look like. It gets more complicated as you have more and more grids in a larger Sudoku board to solve. Rolling thinking, where you have to try and match the orientation of the icons on the bottom on your board on the top, so you're able to kind of shuffle around these pieces through these movements counterclockwise or clockwise, you have to eventually get this yellow piece towards the middle. Frog Prince, as we can see here, um, it's also a pretty simple game, but essentially you have to get the frog here to jump through all the lily pads and they will disappear one by one and not have to skip anything in between. You can't jump between a missing piece, so obviously right now the game is stuck. Next one here, the jumping balls, is another kind of fun game where you're able to jump between other pieces and you can currently jump between this one or this one and the objective is to use these jumps to eventually um, complete the game. So as we can see there, we've uh, completed this level and can go to the next round. 2048 is pretty self-explanatory. It's basically the famous game where you have to add up the numbers to 2048 and then disappear, clearly inspired by Candy Crush or another piece matching game where you have to uh, try and uh, change the pieces of uh, the little characters here until they create a match and how the board stops refreshing and the game stops. So those are all the games. Again, not anything too out of the ordinary, but it's a fun little extra that we don't see in many other players, which I do actually quite like. It's kind of a throwback to the days of the original iPods uh, that used to provide some mini games in there as well, just to pass on time if you are bored. Now here we have the voice recorder and it's a very simple UI. Once again, I can tap on to start. Hello, this is a test of the voice recording capabilities. The Books app is just a text reader. Now under Tools, we have some additional features. Um, there is a built-in radio. What's nice here is that you don't need to plug in headphones to act as the antenna for you to listen to radio. You can actually directly start listening and you can start going through the search. Uh, so you can play it back directly from the speakers, just like a regular 
radio unit. There's also a very basic calendar, and you can even add notes if you want to. So for example, if on October 15th, I can add on, tap on the add key, and then from here, I can bring up a virtual keyboard, which is kind of interesting. Now I can also change things like uh, to a number pad if you want to, as well as a hide the keyboard when you are satisfied. Tap on complete, for example, and this will be saved now under the 15th as a note, and it also turns red. So you can add some quick reminders for yourself using the calendar app. Now going back again, we also have a very basic stopwatch, which again is functional, but not anything too extraordinary. And finally, there is a decompression six fingers, which will simulate different instruments. So for example, you can simulate a drum and then tap on these different buttons to create different tunes. At the same time, you can record these kind of DJ sessions. You can actually be playing music in the background and then add your own kind of instrumentals on top of it. And there's other things like different drum sounds that you can play around with. So it's a fun little extra, not anything to be taken super seriously, but it's a nice thoughtful touch. Again, I think of this more as a game, uh, but it's classified as a utility or tool here. We can also take a look at the settings, and from here we can change the screen timeout. We can also change the brightness. Right now it's at the maximum setting, and it's uh, pretty easy to read, even if you have a little bit of light around you. Um, it still works quite well. You can also change the volume from here, take a look at the storage settings both locally and on the card, as well as your firmware version. One thing I will say about photos is it doesn't seem to have a way for you to rotate the images at least intuitively. There is no built-in accelerometer, so you do have kind of a squished image um, as a result, but you are able to play back a slideshow, so I would like to see an option for rotation in the future. The video, however, does automatically play back in the full screen experience, which is great to see. So if I tap on one of these files, it loads back pretty quickly, as you can see there. And then the interface here is also quite convenient for scrubbing between parts of the file pretty fast. And you can also play and pause the track. So really, the conversion into this full screen experience is done automatically by the software on the player. So it takes full advantage of this widescreen experience, which is quite good. And again, it still is relatively sharp, and the tall aspect ratio does make content feel quite immersive when you're looking at it. So that's more or less it as far as our hands-on review of this uh, new tall aspect ratio mp3 player uh, by Modi. Even though dedicated music players are a dying breed, there are still reasons that some folks may prefer something like this. One of it will be portability, and it can also provide higher quality music. Uh, for example, the parts used in here, including the DAC, the lossless audio formats like FLAC, does mean that the quality of the music playback that we're looking at is going to be pretty strong. So if you are an audiophile and you want something with more fidelity and resolution, that's one area where a dedicated player can still trump a traditional smartphone. A very interesting design overall. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews. That's been the Modi 3.5 inch touchscreen MP3 player, also known as the M9 Plus here in 2019.